Hi, welcome to our Penn State post-game edition here at AltoonMirror.com. 34-24 win over Northwestern. You know I love offense. There was a lot of offense in the first half, Neil. 51 points. Only seven points in the second half. Penn State's defense made a lot of adjustments and, uh, and, and really uh, saved the team in the second half. Yeah, they did. I, I thought the big story was the Penn State offense, though. They finally you know, quit making the defense win every game. And I thought the decision to start Matt McGloin was, was really vital. Stick with them. So I thought, you know, some things happened in this game that may help shape the season in a better way. But I agree with you. You know, it's kind of interesting. Two years in a row, Northwestern has lit them up mm -hmm. for three touchdowns in the first half, only to come back and Penn State's made the adjustments. See, I'm a little skeptical of praising the offense for this reason. This was a terrible Northwestern defense. They've lost four games, five games are overall. In four games, they've given up at least 34 points. Coming into this, at least 38 and three. I mean, Penn State, yeah, they got some things figured out on offense. They look good for a while. But what was it? Do you think Penn State played markedly better on offense or that they just took advantage of an atrocious defense? Silas Red, by the way, career high, 164 yards. Well, I, I think that, you know, Sticking with McGloin and getting away from the yo-yo quarterback, I think, you know, was a statement. Now, how they massaged the situation, Joe, of course, didn't want to talk about it afterwards. I thought that was the biggest difference in the Penn State offense, that they're not constantly looking over their shoulder for another quarterback who hasn't been as good as the one that they finally decided to play. After a game like this, I mean, really, are we not all just sick and tired of this quarterback mess? You put up 34 points. If this coaching staff is still fumbling around with a quarterback competition, then you have to really wonder about their sanity. I mean, how could you possibly still be debating whether or not Boulder or McCoy is going to play? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know how it got this far. Um, Maybe it made McGloin better. Who knows? I mean, the kid has definitely played very well in all their wins. And uh, I felt good for him today because afterwards, he finally looked like the weight of the world was off his shoulders. He smiled almost for the first time all year. Uh, I don't know what they've been doing. I don't know what kind of promises their assurances they made to Bolden going back as far as last year. Uh, but, I mean, I think, you know, part of coaching is making decisions, and they made one today. We are seeing that Silas Red is a really special player. We'll have more on him in the mirror this week. But this guy never goes down on the first hit. I mean, he fights for yardage. Very, very impressed yeah. with, with him. Uh, and, and he will kind of give the offense at least a shot as long as the quarterbacks can – as long as – they get something out of the quarterback position. Yeah, and I thought their offensive line played well. And no doubt Northwestern has bad defense. You wonder how Northwestern can really even compete in the Big Ten. Um, you know, they, 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 you know, they're running around with their backup quarterback. Their lead receiver. Yeah, and running the ball yeah. and, and also passing. I mean, how much more can they ask of him? I'll tell you what, I, I love what they try to do with limited manpower. Dan Persa, 26 of 34 for 290. I mean, they, they have an efficient offense, but at the end of the day, they just kind of get pushed around. And again, let's get back to the Penn State defense because Gerald Hodges had a huge day, 14 tackles, one and a half sacks, the huge interception off a deflection from Jordan Hill, returns at 63 yards, and then Red goes in on the next play. They all said that was really the turning point of the yeah, game. Yeah, big play of the game. Uh, I thought Hill played real well. Devin still had another good game, two tackles for loss. Um, I thought they did a good job early in the game spelling those guys. Obviously, the Penn State defense got stronger as the game went on. Now, let's not get carried away here and think that uh, all the problems are solved. This was a, a close game against Northwestern. By the way, a lot of the guys on ESPN, a lot of people around the country picked Northwestern to win this game. But here's what happened. Michigan State beating Wisconsin. They're in the same division, Wisconsin's the same division as Penn State. Penn State's got a lot of work to do against Illinois, Ohio State, and Nebraska. But that helps out Penn State in the division with the goal of potentially getting to the Big Ten title game. Wisconsin's got to go to Ohio State next week. Here's the scenario. If Ohio State can beat Wisconsin next week, then basically Penn State, if they can beat Illinois, Ohio State, Nebraska, even if Penn State goes to Wisconsin and loses, 
they can get to the Big Ten title game. Yeah. So there's, I mean, Penn State's got a, it's it's got its destiny in its own hands if it can just continue to figure things out. And I, and I think this move that the Big Ten has made, not only adding Nebraska, and this is another story for another day, but creating these two divisions, it really gives everybody a chance to play for something deep into the season. Yeah, and, and again, let's not get carried away. I still don't think they beat Nebraska at home, and Ohio State's going to be tough in Columbus. I think they're going to beat Illinois. Illinois really struggled again today against Purdue. But they've got a shot. They're 7-1. and one. Everybody expected them to be 7-1 and one or 8-1 or and one if with a win over Illinois. And this season, you know, it hasn't been pretty, but it's unfolded the, the, the way that most people thought it would. Yeah, and the one thing is it's become somewhat unpredictable and, and kind of entertaining. I mean, you know, and today made it a little bit more entertaining because they did a little bit more on offense. And at the end of the day, this is the kind of Northwestern team that uh, can stick around for a little while. I'll quote you. You said near the end of the game, Northwestern would be a good Mac team. They would. So, all right. For Neil Riddell, I'm Corey Geiger. Thanks.